Hi, everyone. Welcome to the How We Hustle podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Tanya. And we invite you to join us in our unfiltered conversation about the real life hustle of being an entrepreneur. For more information about the podcast, check out HowWeHustlePodcast.com. Make sure to check us out on Instagram at How We Hustle Podcast. You'll find information on new episodes as well as notable quotes from the episodes we do. So come check us out at How We Hustle Podcast on Instagram. So it's the end of 2018. That came around real quickly, but I made a lot of mistakes in 2018. I had a lot of success, but I made a lot of big mistakes in 2018. And I think that now we kind of wanted to share them, our mistakes and wins for 2018 so that we can clear the air, clear the year and go into 2019 with a fresh start and new goals. What do you think, Mike? So before we talk, are, are there really mistakes or are they just learning experiences that are making you like, you know, turning you into the right path? Yes, they were definitely hard lessons. I like to learn my lessons the hard way. They were hard lessons I learned that I won't make ever again in my business because I learned them very well. But I guess, yeah, I mean, I will reframe that they weren't mistakes. They were life lessons or business lessons that I needed to learn. Because there are a lot of people that avoid making these so-called mistakes. And those people are generally working nine to five jobs right now, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I don't think I avoid mistakes. I think that I go into everything like 100%. I probably dive into things really quickly. And I, I mean, I've had issues with like, hey, how does this fit in with the strategy? Like, I tend to like jump and think that the net will always appear. And I think that the net appears when you've jumped in um, to the right thing. But I think I thought it was the right thing. A lot of the things like sounded like they were the right things and people told me they were the right things to do. But in retrospect, like they weren't the right things. I think also I've learned that it's really easy. It makes it seem like it's easy just to ask someone else who's done there, who's done it before, who's been where you've been. But just because they did it one way doesn't necessarily mean that that way is going to work for you and your business or that it's the right fit. So I think that also recognizing that like as a business owner, like I got my business to where it is right now and yes, I need help and yes, I can't do it alone, but sometimes the help that you're getting isn't necessarily the help that was the right fit for you. Yeah. Um, but, but generally, you know, being a, an entrepreneur, it is a lifelong process and mistakes uh, are, are essential. You know, when you make a mistake, you course correct and that leads you a little bit further down the right direction so you can make your next mistake. But, you know, learning from your mistakes and making mistakes is, is really important, I, I think. So. And I tend to pretty much only want to learn from mistakes. Like I don't learn very well from people telling me what to do. I need to make the mistake to learn the lesson I feel. Um, but I think that when I think about it, it's not necessarily a mistake in the sense that, it put me onto the path that I'm on now and I had to go down that road or I, other things wouldn't have come into my sphere environment. Yeah. Okay. So let's kind of talk about our 2018 and what we reflect on some of our so-called mistakes and maybe just experiences too. Like what, yeah, what did 20 and where, where did 2018 leave us as far as it's one the start of 2019. It does feel like it was just yesterday that we were doing this episode a year ago talking about, <laughs> talking about the new year. And, and so, yeah, let's, let's do that. I know it feels, a, it feels like a little, like it was just yesterday, but then when I think about all the things that have happened this year that I'm like, wow, it actually feels like it was so long ago because I feel like things have changed so many times in my business in just one year. I mean, I started the year off by, um, you know, being coachless and like ending things with my coach that I had had for a year and a half. And that was terrifying because I was, I had never not had a one-on-one -on -one coach at the time. I started my accountability calls with Catherine and those have continued to go every single week. We've traveled together. We've seen each other. We've joined programs together. We were traveling more together. So that was like a pinnacle point. I would have to say like having an accountability partner that I met with every single week without fail, no matter where in the world we were, no matter if we were supposed to be on a plane or not, like we always didn't make book flights when we were supposed to be having those calls. 
So I think that that was probably the most important thing of my year was having that accountability partner and having someone. Cause I think it's really hard even with her. It, it's hard to do this on your own. Like the more, the deeper I get into being an entrepreneur, the more I feel like having someone who's there in your corner who will listen to the bad things as well as the good things, like will celebrate your good things. But because it's, I find like, I don't have a lot of people anymore that you can really open up to about the difficult, hard stuff that happens in your business. You know, my friends and family, I, I want to protect them from like the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Also, I thought that I was above and beyond the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Turns out I am not. <laughs> It is just, I thought, oh, I like graduated. I know that everything comes, like what goes up comes down. Like everything that goes down comes back up. Everything works out. Um, but it still, I think now it's just like bigger things that happen rather than like, I don't get upset about like the little things that happen. Like I used to like not booking a client that I really wanted to work with. I don't get upset about that anymore. Cause I know there's a lot more where that came from, but it's more so the big things like employees and coaches like and investments and things like that that I think are and like what's the direction that you want to go like the strategy like where are we going how are we going to get there and dealing with that kind of stuff more so than like oh getting a client or something like that charging and increasing my prices things like that yeah I mean that's something that I've definitely uh dealt with too in the past year um, you know, at the end of 2017, I sold my business and, you know, that had been, a uh, almost 10 years of my life. And then, you know, 2018 is, has been a, a lot about me, uh, starting a new business and, and figuring that out and deciding if I like it. And if I really want to be doing, uh, you know, what I want to be doing. And I, and I think, one of the biggest lessons, one of the biggest things of 2018 for me was also what you just said was dealing with, uh, like the mindset, like, oh, I'm success, like, like, <laughs> like the hard times are behind me. And I, I think that hard times are really relative. Like there's, there's always going to be challenges. And I, experienced a whole new set of challenges this year a lot of it being like identity and just like starting a new business and and kind of figuring that out and it it, it does uh, challenge your identity and i know with you tanya like you um you know how we're doing well kind of really scaled up built your team and then i think that with you also challenged your identity where it's like you we're like, do I want to be like a big team? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let you talk. Yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it seems like... I forgot that that happened, so it's good that you brought it up, but yeah. Uh, but it seems like it doesn't matter what you're doing or where you go or like there's always going to be challenges with like, is this where I want to be? Uh, even though, you know, uh, I thought I wanted to be here and now I'm here and it's like... Um, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think definitely I found that. Because again, it goes back to like people telling me like what it's supposed to be like and like what the next step is and like what you need to do next. And I'm like, I think like I never got into this business thinking that like I was going to have this like multi-million dollar business. Like I literally got into the business because I wanted to help people. I didn't want to commute to my job. I wanted to be able to travel and I wanted to be able to play golf. Like I didn't feel connected to what I was doing before in the sense that I wasn't making the world a better place. Now I do feel like that. And I have so much freedom now. But yeah, having a team was it definitely that's a good representation of what it was is like, it challenges your identity of like, one, am I capable of being this person? Do I want to do this? Because a lot for the first year of my business, it was like, exponential growth and it never stopped and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was loving every single minute of it. Obviously there were days where I was tired, but I was working a lot, but I loved every second of it. And you would be hard pressed to pull me away from it. In fact, a lot of my friends like made comments about how they didn't see me for almost a year because I never wanted to go out because I'd rather spend time working with my clients or in my business or creating things. 
So I think that was like, you know, I, I take things to the extreme. So it was a little too far on that side, but when having a team, I had so much more freedom, but I was managing people. And that was like a challenge that I'd never experienced before. And something I thought, I don't want to do this. I don't enjoy this. This doesn't make me feel connected to my clients. And also, you know, I have that like feel of like, will these people care about the business and my clients as much as I do? Do they care or are they just trying to want to get paid? Like, I think that that was like a real big struggle for me of like, will I be able to still service my clients and also have the same like level of success for them as I do. Because for me, it's always been more so about their success than my own, which is probably a bad thing, but that's fine. Like I care more about their success than my own. And I think that in that I was caring too much about the, the feelings of my team and the service to my clients and not really looking at inside my own business, like how that was impacting my business and managing people is like not easy. I feel like you have a better run at it than me, Mike, with managing people. But it was a brand new experience that I was like, I want to go back to a one man show. I complained about that for months when I had a team. I just wish my business was back to just being me. I liked it then. I wish it could go back. And in the end, I did make it go back. But I've learned that the way that I had created my team, the way I was managing my team, who was on my team, like it wasn't working in the sense that there weren't clear cut objectives. Like I was more so concerned about the tasks that they were doing and then going over those tasks. And th that was where I went wrong. But I think that certainly like, who am I? Am I this person who's like the head of like a multi-million dollar business or am I just a coach? Can I be that person? I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I know I can, but it's also, do I want that? Not so I can, I'm capable. I can learn to be that person, but like, do I want that? And that's the same thing I went through with my last business where I scaled up. I had, uh, you know, two offices. I had a bunch of people that would come to my offices and work, you know, for me, for my business every single day. And ultimately, I went through the same process as you. I didn't really want that. I didn't want to be a manager. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I scaled it down again. And, you know, that's that's ultimately where it was when I sold it. But when I sold my company, I didn't have any, I didn't really have anyone on my team. I just, uh, I, and, I, and when I scaled it down, I also gave up revenue too. But it was much better that way, right? So. Yeah, see, uh, that's the thing. Like, I feel like people just like want to get to the next level with money. But for me, it's not so much, I was making a shit ton of money at the time, like when I brought on an entire team, like, and I think I've learned like there are things that you need a team for, like things that will give you back your freedom. But then there are also things like I really enjoy doing. And there's the, the reason I'm doing this business is because I actually enjoy them. So to take those things away from me, just to scale up because I shouldn't be using my time to do those things doesn't feel good for me. And it takes me away from something I actually loved about my business. So I think there's like a, there's like a power struggle, I think with me where a coach tells me like, you should be doing it this way. You shouldn't be doing that. Somebody else should be doing that. And me being like, but I love doing this. Like this is something I want to do. And when I don't want to do it, when I'm tired, cause I'm sure that there will become a time where I'm like, you know what? I've done this for long enough and I don't really want to do it anymore. That's the time I think when I would make a change and I learned that there are different ways to hire and there's different ways to build a team now that I wouldn't have to be the one to manage all the people. It's overwhelming when there's so many people and you want to have your hand in every single cookie jar. Yeah. And you know, that is actually, you know, kind of the same lessons that I've learned. So, you know, late 2017, but really for all of 2018, I've been kind of developing my company Peacock Books, where I help entrepreneurs and professionals uh, solve the problem of writing and publishing a book. So, you know, they can become more of an authority figure in what they do and ultimately make more money. And I got into this business because I just generally love, lo I love it. Like I love helping stories come together and, you know, 
bringing bringing value, putting it together, packaging it, and making it a book. And you know, I went to a book launch for one of my clients uh, two three weeks ago, and it was like it was so fun, you know. But for me to you know scale it to the point where it's like a multi six figure and beyond business. I have to go way beyond my, you know, passions and I have to bring on team members and whatnot. So as I've been doing that, I started realizing that maybe I, I like it as a, a passion and, and more and, and less, maybe it's not the kind of business that I want to scale up. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm still doing it, but I'm doing it more on a one to one basis where I can keep it as, you know, maybe more referral only. Now I've ha- I have enough clients now, like case study clients where I am getting uh, referrals. And I'm happy with that because I can work with people on more of a comfortable level. I don't need to, to develop a big team to support it. And then I'm also working on some LinkedIn stuff, which is a little more scalable. So between the two of them, um, I- I'm finding my sort of comfort zone of, of being able to to build businesses, to build my business in a way that kind of is comfortable for me. I'm able to, 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 to scratch my creative itch and help people on, on one level and also, uh, you know, help people on, a, on a, another more scalable level, which reflects my, my experience on an online business a little better. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I always talk to my clients about how it annoys the shit out of me that you... I'm like, it takes me five hours to write one email. That's like three paragraphs and it takes you like four minutes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's so annoying that he can do this so easily and so quickly. Uh, but again, like there's things that I can do easily and quickly that I don't want to build a business around because like, you know, that's not necessarily the thing that I want to only have or the thing that I want to manage a team around with it. Yeah. Like I love writing like uh, the, the books I've been writing for my clients. Like I, I, I love, it's almost like I get so invested in them that it's, it's hard for me to scale it because I have to take myself out of it. So I, 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 I want to, I'm going to keep doing books, but I want to do it at a pace that allows me to enjoy it still and uh, not need to, 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 to take myself out of that joy. And then, you know, uh, beyond that, I have other things that are bringing in money. So I'm, I'm kind of finding that sweet spot. And 2018 has helped me figure out what that sweet spot is. And, you know, another lesson that I've learned in 2018 is, I don't, it's, you know, because I sold my business at the end of 2017. So had a little bit of some money come in. And that's a challenge, you know. And I, and I think, uh, I think Tanya, you can also speak to the same thing, right? Like, so it's almost like, when you have the luxury of money, you lose the, the benefit of creativity. You know? Oh my God. And like the kind of drive I find when I need to make money, I'm freaking badass at it. I am reminded of how good I am at making money and how good I am at helping other people make money. But when I have so much money coming in, I feel like, I think I've learned that there's some sort of weird money mindset thing I think that I have where I feel like I just need to give it back out to everybody. <laughs> I'm like, oh, here, have some. Like, here, you want to do a job for me? Like, here, take all of this money. <laughs> because maybe I'm like uncomfortable with having it or I don't know what it is. But certainly I don't have the same like drive to create and to be visible. And because like you have money coming in and then you end up giving, I, I end up giving it out to people, which means that I end up managing people which I don't want to do. So it's like a bad cycle that I've recognized myself getting into. And I think it just takes you out of the selling aspect of like bringing more in, at least for me. What about you? Yeah, I know for sure. Like I've been trying to build a new business, like my last business that I, you know, grew to multi six figures and sold. I grew that. Like I was basically broke the entire 10 years I was building that business. And what I mean by that is like, I never really had the luxury of extra money. Whenever I had money that was always diverted somewhere to, to reinvest it, but I never really had. 
I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's like an entrepreneurial thing though, because I find as soon as I speak to clients or myself, when someone says, okay, like you just made all this money, like, what are you going to do with it? We all have some like weird new freaking investment that we want to invest in for our business or for another business or something. I remember once I bought (laughs) so ridiculous one time, like I got a new client and as a gift to myself, I bought like an intro and an outro for my videos. (laughs) Like that was my gift to myself. Like, Oh, I want an intro and an outro made for me for my videos. Like so weird. Like, why don't we just like do something else with it? Like put it towards something personal and said, we always invest it back into a business thing. Well, because part of it is, is like when you have a business, you just, you want, it's like your, it's like your child. So you want to give your child, you want to, you know, uh, <laughs> develop it. Right. So it just, but the, the point is, is that that's how I think that is really the key to to creativity and innovation is is not having necessarily is relying on yourself. You know, when you rely on your bank account to solve problems, you just like I have Dave. I've spent a lot of money in the last year just because I could, and that like I was trying to I was trying to substitute hard work. By just, you know, like solving. Paying someone else to do it. Yeah. And yeah, that's, uh, doesn't always work, you know? So that it is a lesson. It never works. It doesn't work <laughs> to pay someone else to do your work for you. It, that never works. I've learned that instead of paying people to do something for you to like, cause like I made a big mistake or a big life lesson in hiring a company that would handle my failed payments. Did I already talk about this? I don't know. If I did talk about this, then I apologize. But for I hired a company to deal with my failed payments. And what I've learned is, number one, that company is great for people that have like a membership with a very small amount of money that's being failed. For me, if one of my payments fails, it's going to be like thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. And they take about 50% of your um, recovered amount of money. So Stripe, which is the company that I use for my payments, changed their coding one month. And so everybody's payment failed. So then I was paying this company a bunch of money, like 50% of the income of thousands of dollars to recover these payments. But because I know every single one of my clients, I don't have clients that I don't know. They would end up coming to me to deal with the failed payment anyways. So I was giving this company a bunch of money to deal with my failed payments. They weren't dealing with my failed payments. I was still, and now I'm paying them half of the money that I'm making. Big mistake, so please don't do that. Um, But what I learned is that I was trying to hire out or put money towards a job, a part of my business that's uncomfortable for me to deal with. It's not fun for me. It's not fun for my clients when we have to deal with failed payments. It's life. We all have to deal with that. But it's uncomfortable. Like, you know, it's awkward. We're both feel awkward about it. They do. I do like, I can appreciate that. And so, but they're obviously going to want to come to me and just throwing money at it, saying to a service like, Oh, you guys deal with it. Doesn't actually fix the, the situation in the end. I'm still going to deal with it. And now I'm paying out all of this income for them actually not even doing the job that they were supposed to be doing. So when you throw money at a problem to just try to make it go away or just make it disappear, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was definitely a big lesson for me is, uh, there's, I forget what that book is called, but, uh, <laughs> the, the value of being broke or something. And no, nobody wants to be broke, but, uh, the way to build a business is to roll up your sleeves and build a business. Uh, it's uh, the, the way to finance your business is to get your customers to finance your business, not really to finance. And this is how you built your business, Tanya, right? You didn't, you didn't, and no one starts like. Yeah, I didn't invest money necessarily. I did invest money because I invested a shit ton of money into an email service provider and I invested in a coach. I had invested in coaching. So I had invested in things to develop me and to, to develop my business. But I was still, I was making money in my business before I actually right. was and it's like, like in when you, it's, it's when you make money and when you sign a client, bring revenue in, then you use some of that revenue to reinvest and, you know. Or all of it. <laughs> right. But the majority of it, at least. But that's how, but. like, that's how, like, good business is. 
I want to say good, but that's like a healthy business is funded by its clients, not by <laughs> deep pockets, not by savings. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's one thing. Yeah, sure. You can use a little bit of money you've saved up to uh, start a business, but ultimately you, you don't sustain a business with savings. You sustain a business with sales. <laughs> well, and that's actually a good point because to be honest, the whole reason I even have a business today is because I had exhausted my savings account by the time I actually started to make money on my business. I had maxed out my credit cards. I had drained all of my savings accounts. And at that point, that was the point where I was like, well, shit, like I'm going to have to do something different because like now I actually, and I was making a lot of money at my job. And so I was pissing away it all <laughs> into my business and it had, I had nothing to show for it because I wasn't doing the scary things. So when I had no money, when I was completely maxed out, when I wasn't going to be able to pay my credit card, that's when I was like, okay, what have I not been willing to do? And that was the moment where I started to become willing to do the things that I was afraid to do. Cause at that point it was like, like shit or get off the pot. So like either you're going to do this and you're going to do the things that scare you that you've been avoiding, or you're not going to have a business. And I think that at the end of the day, I ask myself that question every single time. Now I made a lot of, you know, I learned a lot of lessons this year, but I was doing things that absolutely terrified me. Maybe they terrified me for the right reasons because I shouldn't have done them or they were terrifying me because they were just brand new. Like having a new coach was totally brand new. I'd never worked with anybody else. I was terrified. Um, and it was the right decision. Maybe I didn't choose the best other person, but like I had to do something different. I was working like so much. I needed a team. I needed some help. I needed to change some things in my business and maybe that wasn't the right way to do it, but I certainly needed to do something that I wasn't doing. So I had to do something different. I had to do something that scared me. I had to do something that I ne didn't necessarily want to do for the benefit of my clients, for the benefit of my business. So sometimes you know, I th I think it's a great position to be in. I've always grown my business in the moments where I had no money. My cat got sick. I'd maxed out my credit cards. I wasn't making money in my business. I hired a team. I made a misstep there. I invested in some a video shoot that didn't end up being good. I know we've done an episode on that um, lesson that I learned in the summertime. You know, so all these different pieces, I was investing in things that scared me that I didn't know how to do. Some of them pay off and some of them don't, but those are the moments when I actually grew my business and changed it when I was put in a situation where I had to. Yeah. And that, I think that lesson is, it's very applicable to everyone who's listening because everyone can probably resonate with that on some level. And I mean, I don't want to, it's like, there's really a comfort in, like, I remember my last business just like, I was always broke, but I was like, I, I was never really worried about it because I just, I knew that I was like, you know, I, I could make the money. You just, you know what I mean? And that I, I think is the best part of having being an entrepreneur Yeah, is I think every time you're like completely broke, I literally tell myself like, man, I'm a badass at making money. So I can make money as much money as I want whenever I want. It just depends on what am I willing to do to get there. And am I, especially when you've not been making money, you've probably also not been working very hard or you've also probably not been like, you know, doing the things that scare you. And so putting yourself into that situation means, you know, I'm going to have to work up the courage or I'm going to have to put myself out there. I'm going to have to get more visible. I'm going to have to spend some time actually doing some work on my computer. I'm going to have to say no to things that I wanted to do prior because I need to get back to what I was doing before. But, you know, so sometimes we don't necessarily want to do it, but I always think that it's a good thing when we actually get back into it. Cause especially if you have a business that you love, like when I get back into my business and doing it, I'm like, Oh my God, I love this. So it doesn't, even feel like work when I get back into the habit of what I was doing that was working and get out of the habit of like the bad habits that are not working. Yeah. And it feels, it feels really good to, to like do uncomfortable things and get it over with. And it just feels like you've accomplished, you know, when you get your confidence back. Yeah. When you try and uh, outsource the uncomfortable things, you don't accomplish that uh, <laughs> confidence. You don't, you don't feel good about it. You just feel like you, you don't really feel like an entrepreneur, you know what I mean? You don't feel like you've solved any problems, you just... And I used to think that I couldn't do it alone at that point. 
I had literally been so conditioned at that point that I was like, oh, I can't do these things. I don't remember how to do them or I'm not as good at them. And in fact, you've learned so much from, you know, having someone else do them or they've put systems in place for you that now it's actually really a lot easier for you to do it on your own. That sometimes when you've outsourced it, that forced you to create systems for doing it. And now that you have those systems, it's actually easier for you to get back. Something, into something I've noticed too is like when you, when you hire everything out, you pay for things. And by the time it's completed, you realize that that's not even what you needed in the first place. Oh my God, so often. And you have to go back and redo it or like the person doesn't know. I always think to myself and I tell my clients this, that there's a reason that they're not doing what you're doing, that they're not, their business isn't what you do. Like their expertise is not potentially in the overall picture. They are focused on one piece of the puzzle. I just had this conversation with a client this morning and they are not thinking outside the box. They're just doing what they're told. They're not coming up with like, oh, maybe this doesn't make sense or maybe I should be doing this a different way like you would be if you were doing it. And sometimes they just do it wrong. And now you actually have to go back and spend more time doing it for them. Yeah. You just like, you plan things in your head. You're like, okay, my business needs this. So you plan it out. You hire someone, you pay them thousands of dollars to do it. Like just a very basic example is just like in the beginning of 2018, I had this really like complex website for my book company and I was paying like a monthly management fee for it. And I was like spending all this energy, like figuring out what should go here, what should go there. And then I'm like, man, I've spent thousands of dollars on this website over the <laughs> it has literally done nothing for me. But that's because I was like thinking like to, to have a business, you need to have an awesome website. So I'm <laughs> going to, so I'm going to plan. Excuse me, are you for real? So I'm going to plan out this website. I'm going to pay someone lots of money. We're going to spend all the money on design and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to like, and then I'm like, why do I even have this website? Like, why don't I just, instead of spending time and money on this website, why don't I just spend time and money selling? <laughs> you know, like or not even money, just time selling. If I spend I'm pretty sure that we've done an episode about that no, very long ago. We did, but it's like if I just took the time I'm spending um, like <laughs> worrying about this website, if I just spent that time <laughs> trying to get customers and talking about what I do, it would be way more effective. <laughs> it's amazing, I have to say. It's amazing how quickly you actually book clients when you literally just start talking about it. I am always amazed by how many of my clients book a client the same day, the next day, after they just begin speaking about it again. It's something that's so simple that a lot of the time we forget. Yeah. So, but you know, these are all lessons, right? So, and when you learn lessons, you become better and you become, you, you, when you learn lessons, you get a leg up on everyone that isn't learning lessons, mm -hmm. you know, and you, not that you're competing with other people, you are competing really with the person you were yesterday, I guess. You're competing with yourself and even competing is not really the right word I want to use, but you are growing, you know. And if you don't learn these lessons, then you're not really growing and evolving as an entrepreneur. So we can all be grateful for the lessons that we learn. We can all be grateful for the money that we deployed and never got back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, like I think it's also about number one, always know, just need to get it on my soapbox for a minute. There is no website that will ever be more important than selling. Websites, as we have a, an actual episode about this, like websites are dead. People don't go to your website and decide to book, to to hire you. Most people have never been to my website. Probably all of you guys have never been to my website, never even seen it. And they hire me and they don't even know. They've never, they don't even know what my website is. So that's never the way that you're going to sell. You never need a website. I have clients that make multi six figures a year and have no website. I was actually talking to a friend of mine the other day who was kind of getting into the business and they were saying to me like, oh, I'm building my website. And I said, I'm like, don't do that. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, like your website's useless. You don't need a website. They're like, people they, learn that they couldn't believe me. They're like, no, you're, yeah, why no one believes us. Never. No one ever believes me when I tell that them. No one. And I'm like, 
Okay, I'm telling you. And they only ever come back to me after they've built the website to be like, wow, that was a big waste of money. Because think about you just spent money, thousands of dollars on a website that didn't you didn't use. I did that twice when I started. And then working. I took it down. I just I actually took it down. I'm like I never even put it up, the two that I paid for. Three thousand dollars for each one of them. That was six thousand dollars in two thousand and sixteen that I never used. And I actually didn't want a new website done because I'm like, no one ever goes to it. It's hideous. I have website shame, but I don't really care. And my old VA, she, she was the one who was like, no, 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 I'm going to do it. I'm like, you can do it. Don't ask me anything about it. Don't spend one minute of my time on it because I am not spending any time working on a website because it is not a good use of my time. <laughs> that is like, I'm like, a website is never a useful thing. Now, a sales page, a order form, an opt-in, those are important things. And most websites, you can't even create those on them. And most now, now we're getting into a... To, to, uh... We're going down the rabbit hole now, but uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but the okay, point is, is that uh, really your business reveals that what you have to do in your business reveals itself when you do the hard work. When you just try and outsource the hard work, you end up spending money on the wrong ways, and <laughs> you know it's uh, it doesn't work that way, right? Uh, the, the lesson, I guess one of the, the main lessons I learned in 2018 is if, you know, there's no substitute to hard work when it comes to growing a business. And there's no substitute to selling. There's no substitute to maybe doing the uncomfortable. These are not things that you can very easily outsource. And... Even if you do like get your business, uh, you grow your business, get it to the next level, there's going to be a whole new set of, maybe you can start to outsource some things, but there's going to be a whole new set of challenges that once again, you can't just outsource. You got to just roll up your sleeves and do. And I will, and we can do an episode on like what I've learned about what, how to outsource and the, the shift that I've made when it comes to outsourcing that's been really helping me and my clients. Like we can do an episode on that in the future. In 2019. But uh, I'm actually, you know, I've had uh, ups and downs in 2018 and more, I don't want to say downs, but there's been times in 2018 where I've been down. But 2019 is around the corner, two weeks away, and pretty excited for it because I feel like all of the lessons I learned in 2018, uh, you know, I sold my business in 2017, used 2018 to kind of you know, uh, re, I want to say re, realign my, myself and, and figure out what, you know, you know, I actually uh, kind of add on to that point in, in 20, when I sold my business at the end of 2017, I thought I knew what was next, but it wasn't until like getting into the trenches of what's next that I really figured out what's next. And that sort of brought me to where I am now. And now 2019 is coming, and I, I feel well positioned to, to have a an awesome year in 2019. Mm -hmm. I love like the new year. I think it's the freaking best time because we do we get a whole new fresh start. And I mean, I think it's important to end the year off on a high as well because people always think they're like, oh, December, it's done. Like I can't meet my goals. And in fact, I have always made the most money like going from like December to January. I've had clients that book December 31st, January 1st, December 25th, December 24th. Like I've been on the phone with clients that booked on that moment. People are in a buying mood, so you can always end the year off well. But going into 2019, like I have amazing goals. I'm on a new, a new direction that, again, I didn't think that I would be on, but I love the direction that I'm going. I feel really aligned with it. And I have learned a lot of things that I definitely can take. 2018, I think, was like a shrinking kind of, I think I was on a high for all of 2017. And I thought like nothing could, <laughs> nothing could hurt me. Nothing could change me. Nothing could do anything. Um, and that it was only up. But I've learned that what goes up comes down. What goes down comes back up. So, you know, it's about growing and evolving and, and that, yeah, I'm going to definitely take those lessons into 2019. And I feel like more prepared and excited and like more like a boss, I would say than I was in 2000 and the beginning of 2018. I don't think I knew the real definition of what a boss meant, but I literally 
nothing has changed in terms of how motivated and obsessed with my business I am and my clients. And I can't wait for what comes in 2019 because big goals, big new experiences. I've never gone to a live event because I have a bit of social anxieties, believe it or not. And I'm going to start going to a lot more live events and having live events in 2019. So that's exciting. What are you focusing on, Mike, in 2019? I am focusing on really getting back into the, uh, you know, you know, doing a bunch more books, kind of, uh, you know, maybe doing like one, one book a month and then also, uh, helping people, uh, build their businesses on LinkedIn, which is something that I'm also, uh, uh, kind of really excited about right now. And I'm, uh, I want to be a lot more visible, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, like, you know, just get myself out there and, but, but, you know, overall just get back into it, you know, get back into the roll my sleeves up and, and, and stop trying to solve problems the easy way and really just become an entrepreneur. Like, you know, the, the nitty gritty of the, the, the hustle, you know, <laughs> I love to hustle. Even though like people are like, no hustle, don't hustle. And like, I'm all about automation and not hustling, but there's a certain like amazing high that you get when you are hustling. Yeah. That's what, that's what it's like, it's just it's exciting about it. And that's what makes you like excited to, to revel in the spoils of entrepreneurship is the hustle. And I think that's also like why people get so obsessed with the entrepreneurial world is like, people that are destined for entrepreneurship are like creative. They like to create things. It's exciting. It's that like feeling of doing something brand new and creating something that doesn't exist. I mean, it has its ups and downs. Yeah. And it has its ups and downs. Let me tell you, it's tiring. And you know, you know, you have that feeling like, is this what I should be doing? Is am I creating something amazing or is this going to flop? Like, you know, but I definitely think that we get a little bit addicted to like the creating of new things as long as we like follow it through. And I think focusing on one thing at a time is going to be my 2019 is like having like, like laser focus on one project at a time per quarter, rather than thinking about doing like a hundred different things. That's going to be the change that I'm going to be making. It's like not juggling a bunch of balls is just literally focusing on one project per quarter. And we'll see how that goes. You know what I just realized too, as we end this episode, I think this is our our 100th episode. Oh my God, really? That's hilarious. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, happy 100 episodes. Like, I can't believe that we, because when we started this podcast, literally, we were just like, oh, like, we'll see if this works out. We'll see if we like doing this. I was afraid of public speaking at the time. So, like, this is like what helped me get to the point where I could speak to people about what I do or anything. So that's pretty crazy. Like, yeah, we've, it's been, uh, it's been two, amazing. two, almost two years. Little, little over two years. Yeah. That's so crazy. we've come a long way. We've, we we've, have come a long way. We've, we are both very, we're with the same, different. we're the same people, but we're also different. So I'm so different. When we started this podcast, we taped some of those episodes in like the boardroom at the corporate job I was working at. Like so crazy, <laughs> so crazy. But I wasn't in the boardroom because I'm actually, uh, I have a phobia of those kind of environments. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, I'm, I'm actually very grateful that I've met you, Mike, because I wouldn't be on this journey whatsoever if it wasn't for meeting you. So thank you, universe. Um, but I have seriously, like seriously developed from knowing you and like having these conversations. Like when I first started, I didn't know anybody who was an entrepreneur and I probably would never have done it if I hadn't known you. So thank you. And thank you for doing this podcast with me. Like I appreciate it. And it's been fun. We've changed ups and downs, but it's all worth it. Tanny and I went from being snowboarding buddies, (laughs) (laughs) snowboard instructors. I don't even teach snowboarding anymore, but (laughs) snowboard instructors to like podcast co-hosts. And entrepreneurs. Yeah. We used to both teach snowboarding on the weekends for fun, and uh, this is this is how it ended up, right? Us so being crazy. entrepreneurial co-hosts on a podcast many years later. Like when I think about it, like that day that I was like, "Hey, who are you? <laughs> I don't know you." Oh my god, it's so crazy that it, it comes to this now. But thank you, universe. Like your the world works in mysterious ways. Like who knows why people come into your life, but. They're here for a season, a reason, or a lifetime. 
All right, so to the lessons of, may the lessons of 2018 lead to a prosperous 2019. Mm -hmm. Same with you guys. I hope that you guys are setting your goals for 2019 and that everyone has a prosperous 2019 that's bigger and better than you've ever could even imagine. And that's a wrap on another episode of How We Hustle. For more information, check out howwehustlepodcast.com.